Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to correct a reconciled deposit, particularly when that deposit contains a customer payment. It can be a little tricky, so stay tuned and watch how it's done. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Okay, if you're watching this, it's likely you've encountered it, or you might be encountering it even today. So what am I talking about? What is this guy talking about? I actually see this a lot. I see this a lot when I start working with new clients. It happens frequently. And what happens is this. They record a, an invoice, which posts to income the second I do. That's what an invoice does. It, it posts two things. It reflects income, and it reflects the fact that I now have a receivable. So it hits my profit and loss on my balance sheet. I have income on my profit and loss, and now somebody owes me money. I have the rights to collect that money. It's my accounts receivable. And then what happens is they, you know, especially if someone's just inexperienced, it's not that they're a bad person, they're just not experienced with accounting and QuickBooks. And what happens is they, they, they just stop at the invoice and, and they don't know that there's anything more to do. And at the moment, there may not be. But then what happens is the customer comes in or sends a check in. And they say, oh, I got a check. Cool, let's deposit it. And then as they deposit, they say, well, what should I do with that deposit? Oh, look, there's a whole banking menu. Let's make the deposit in QuickBooks. And I'm going to back up and show you the whole process here so you understand all the implications, exactly um, all the problems that this creates and, uh, and how to fix it. That's the most important thing, right? How to fix it. That's what we're all about here at Nerd Enterprises. How to, we're all about solutions here, how to fix things. So let's say I had an invoice to my customer, always writing incorporated. And I post it to uh, accounting, $1,000, right? Close that. We don't really need that. So I post my invoice. Before I post it, let's run a profit and loss so we can see exactly, excuse me, how this all impacts everything and junk. Run my balance sheet. That's not what I wanted. That is not what I wanted. Balance sheet standard. Oops, get back over here. So I got my profit and loss, got my balance sheet. They're both run for all dates. They're both blank, nothing up my sleeve. So of course, look what happens when I post this balance, uh, this uh, invoice. The balance sheet updates with my accounts receivable and the profit and loss updates with my income. Of course, it's the same amount. Now the customer pays and the client comes in and says, okay, let's make the deposit. And they say, okay, we received it from Always Right Incorporated. We'll We'll put that on there. And QuickBooks even warns you here. It says customers got outstanding invoices, but a lot of people may actually not even include this step. So let's say we didn't include this step. And we just say, well, it was for accounting services, so let's post it there. Now look what happens. I've got my accounting services income already here because of the invoice that I posted. So of course, when I post this deposit, it's going to double it up. Save and close. And a lot of clients don't believe me. I don't understand. How's it doubled up? And I, the best way to explain it to them is just to demonstrate it and show them. So and by sh the best way to show them is to double click from the profit and loss and show them, well, here it is from the invoice and here it is again from the deposit. Now, of course, you may have a lot of transactions on the book, so it may not quite be as obvious as this, but you can always customize the report and filter it for that one client so you can show it. And, of course, you can choose to total it by client or by customer here. So now that we and, – and now look what happens. First of all, my account receivable is off, right, because the client paid, and it doesn't reflect that they've paid. It still shows that they owe me the money. Let's run the customers and receivables open invoices. There it is. According to this, always right, still owes me $1,000. Problem is, they paid me, right? I've got the money in the bank. It's here in this deposit. It's here in iBank. And so how do we fix it? And, and then here's what happens next is they go to reconcile, right? Let's go reconcile the account. Let's say this is our first transaction. And I click continue, and there's my $1,000. I check it off. I say, perfect. My books are in great shape. Little do I know that they're not in great shape. I have twice the income I'm supposed to have, and I have a receivable on the books that doesn't really exist anymore. So what do I do? How do I fix this? And that's where Nerd comes in to save the day. 
and they call me up and they say, Seth, something doesn't look right. And I, and I take a look and I say, you're right. Something doesn't look right. They say, this customer doesn't owe me this money anymore. They paid. And I say, okay, well, when did they pay you? And they say, well, let's look in the check register. And we go in and we see it's the only transaction in the whole set of books. Great. It's easy to find. So I edit the transaction and say, well, how do we fix this? Well, I've got an invoice on the books that they paid. And they paid it on this day. So here's what we do. And the, and the whole point is that I don't want, I can't just change this deposit. Because if I change a reconciled transaction, it's going to throw off my beginning balance. Now, granted, in this case, it would be easy enough to just do it and re-reconcile because there's only one month. And we've, you know, we're looking at a brand new company file. But assuming you have a business that's in, been in business for 10 years, and you have 10 years worth of bank wrecks, you don't want to have to redo every bank wreck since the beginning of time. First of all, you don't have to, want to have to spend the time undoing them all. But the point being that you need a way to fix this that doesn't throw off the reconciliation. And that's what I'm about to show you. So what we'll, the first thing we have to do is get the payment on the books. We've got to get the receivable out of there. So let's go to Customers and Receive Payments from Always Right. So we, we reflect the fact that they paid us, save and close. Now the receivable is off my books. See, balance sheet's fixed. Now it's uh, sitting in undeposited funds, though. So what do I do here? I come into my deposit. I click my payments. Now it's in here from undeposited funds, and I check it off. And I bring it in, and for a moment, my deposit is doubled. But then I come here, and here's where we're going to fix the duplicated income. I go to edit and delete line and now I've just got my payment in there for a thousand dollars so I'm about to save this transaction but I tricked QuickBooks QuickBook doesn't know what I did because secretly before without saving it I, I swapped out the customer payment for the duplicated uh, line item that I originally recorded in the deposit which uh, booked it straight to income and now what I've done is I properly closed out accounts receivable because I reflected the payment that they received and I brought that payment into the bank account from undeposited funds. So now when I hit save and close, my income is accurate, my balance sheet is up to date, my bank account is accurate, everything is fixed, everything is wonderful, and we're ready to move on and grow our business into a multi-billion dollar business. And that, my friends, is how to correct a reconciled deposit, particularly where it involves a customer payment. I hope, as always, that this has helped you. Please remember to post your comments on my blog or on my YouTube channel, wherever you've seen this video. And again, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you on the web. This has been a special presentation brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, a QuickBooks how-to on correcting reconciled deposits. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.